Org to register for an at-home cheek swab kit to be mailed directly to you. You have the power to save a life and give those with immunodeficiency a fresh sense of hope. To the fifth inning we go. Griffin Young back on the mound for Nashua. And we have in the booth the owner of the Nashua Silver Knights as well as the Worcester Bravehearts, John Creedon Jr. John, thanks for taking the time out to come talk with us. Sonny, thanks for inviting me. So in 2014, you started in the FCBL. You purchased the Worcester Bravehearts. You started that team over there in Worcester. And then last year, the Nashua Silver Knights. But to start, what brought you to the Futures League and what was the draw that led you to the FCBL? Uh, so, um, you know, we're... My family and I were, were from the Worcester area. Uh, grew up in Shrewsbury and, and have worked in Worcester for several years now. Um, we we had a business relationship with the Worcester Tornadoes. We actually rented them a tent and left field for their hospitality space. Um, and sadly, when they went out of business in 2012, um, you know, I felt like it, it was kind of leaving a vacuum, kind of an open space uh, for baseball in Worcester. And, um, you know, our family is Creedon & Company. We, it's a catering business and a tent rental business and, and uh, really events. And we kind of felt like we could bring hospitality uh, to the equation by trying to bring baseball back to Worcester. Um, and so that was the business reason. That one, fly ball, shallow center field. It looks like it's going to be Shumsky who calls everyone off. For the first out of the inning, Griffin Young continuing to look dominant as Logan Bravo steps in. Now, with the Silver Knights in 2019, decided to take over here in Nashua. What was the draw in Nashua, and what led you to say, I want to take over the Silver Knights as well? Yeah, I, I, so I mean, it's a, it's a flagship franchise of the Futures League. It's one of the founding franchises. The, the Silver Knights are in their 10th season along with the league here. Um, as you can see, Holman Stadium is just a, a historic gem. It's um, really got some, some old world charm here with all the brickwork, um, not to mention the, the actual history of, of who's played here between Newcomb and, and Campanella and, and so many others. Um, and uh, at the time, a little over a year ago, Drew Weber was looking to uh, sort of retire. Uh, you know, he, he had owned the Lowell Spinners for a long time. He also was one of the founders of the Futures League, and he started the Silver Knights. So he and I had a chat, and, and he was looking to, to get out of it, and, and I saw an opportunity to kind of expand our brand of baseball into a, a wonderful new community. Logan Bravo strikes out. That's now eight strikeouts for Griffin Young. Got him again with that curveball. Now, with this 2020 season, the regulations, you know, the, that each team has to follow and different regulations as we're in three different states here in New England, how tough has that been to manage, you know, this, the all these regulations, especially with kind of two different rules you have to follow? Yeah, it's, it, it took some logistical acrobatics uh, before the season started, um, enough to make anybody's head hurt. Um, and, and, you know, we're kind of calling 2020 the improbable season because right. it, it, you know, right up until we started with opening day, we didn't know if it was going to happen or not because, as you mentioned, you know, the, the league spans New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Connecticut, and then six individual communities. Um, so, you know, we had to really dig in and, and get approvals from three states as well as these six communities. It would not have happened without the, the leadership of Joe Paolucci, the commissioner of the league and uh, an incredible can-do spirit from all the, all the owners in the league, from the Januaries who own the North Shore team to Chris English who owns Brockton, Donnie Morehouse and, and Chris Thompson who own Westfield, Mike Pfaff and his group who own New Britain. Um, everybody said, look, you know. That one grounded past the dive of Vieira into right field for a base hit. Everybody kind of said, look, you know, if there's a way that we can fulfill the mission of, of the Futures League, which is to create baseball for the student athletes, but also for the communities, let's do it. And as important as baseball is, nothing's more important than keeping people safe. So, you know, we, we sought advice from medical professionals and public health professionals and really put together six individually tailored comprehensive COVID readiness plans to be able to do this. And, and you know, next week the, the season wraps up and, and I'm, I'm so proud that we've been able to keep all the student athletes, staff and fans safe and healthy th this summer, which is just remarkable given, you know, what we keep getting bombarded with, you know, um, with this pandemic. You're one of the really the biggest voices in the Futures League. As a team that may want to join the Futures League, what is one thing that you have to say that makes this league so special? Um, you know, th this is this is baseball as it should be. Um, it's I, I, I'm a firm, firm believer 
in the the summer collegiate baseball model. Um, I think you know up until COVID hit, you could see college athletics, you know the level of professionalism and production um, with college football, baseball, hockey, a, a, basketball, a, all the college sports just keeps getting pushed down to younger and younger levels here. Um, and these guys, they're you know they're, they're chasing their dreams so they, they are hustling and these are these are immensely talented athletes McElroy hits that one the other way Dupree will give it chase he will not get it that'll drop down off the fence Dupree's gonna throw to the cutoff man here comes a run to score it's gonna be close and the navigators get on the board first run of the game right there a big double for McElroy with two outs and this game's tied at one. So, so Donnie, it's a, it's a great brand of baseball for the student athletes, but also for the communities, because we, we step in um, to what oftentimes were professional stadiums, and we provide that minor league style of baseball for, for fans and communities. We assume the mantle of the community's baseball team, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's it's a thrill for the players. It's a thrill for the fans, the young fans who go up to the players in normal times that ask for an autograph. That's not happening this summer. And, you know, I don't know who gets a bigger thrill, you know, in, in that little magical exchange, the, 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 the athlete or the, the six-year-old fan asking for an autograph. It's, it's really something magical. Um, so, you know, if, if folks are interested, um, you know, we, we, t we also are business-minded. Um, you know, we... we, we treat this as, as a business opportunity. Um, so it's equal parts, base, top-notch baseball, but also fan-friendly um, entertainment. Now with, you know, you just saw the run right there. How cool is it to have fans in the stands and now cheering for a team in Nashua? It, it's pretty remarkable. And, um, you know, you and I see with, with the, with the. With that ball's gonna get away. And it looks like there will be an advance right there from McElroy to third base with two outs. You and I see the, the difference between being here at a game in Nashua versus a, a game in, in where the Bravehearts are playing and our temporary home in Lemonster. Right. We can't even play at Holy Cross because of, you know, how, how things are, are going in Massachusetts. But I just have to give so much credit to uh, Mayor J Jim Donchis, uh, the mayor of Nashua, his whole administration, Lisa Photo who's the commissioner of the Department of Public Works, and Nick Caggiano, the Parks and Rec director, and it, Bobby Bagley, who's the public health uh, director for Nashua. Without their support, um, we would not be playing baseball here today. There would not be fans here today. They vetted our plan. They got behind it. They, they came to believe in how we were doing, what we were going to do, um, and they were convinced that we would be able to keep people safe and healthy, as we have. And um, it's, again, it's... It's, it's the improbable season. I, I, I I'm just keep knocking wood and uh, make sure that we're going to get through through the end of next week here. John Creedon Jr. in the booth here. It's a 3-2 count to O'Halloran. Runner on third base. That one fouled back. We'll do it again. And John, can you speak a little bit about, you know, what went into this season and how, you know, with a lot of summer league baseball kind of canceling, what made the Futures League go at it and say, we're going to make a plan to play this season? I think... You know, they're like, they're, there's just so much. That one just misses for ball four. Young thought he had the hook in there for the ninth strikeout. Wasn't the case. It'll put runners at the corners for the Navigators. There's, there's so much pain out there, you know, economically for small businesses like us. Um, but again, you know, it, it just took this can-do attitude to, to say, look, do we have an opportunity? And, and, and I think... The, the, the size of the Futures League allowed us to be nimble and sort of thread the needle, so to speak, you know, between, you know, COVID spikes here and there and, and, and all these question marks that are coming up this fall with schools returning and universities. So we really, you know, all these student athletes, their seasons, their spring seasons were canceled, every single one of them. Um, and, and that was devastating. Even the NCAA allowed an extra year of eligibility for all the athletes who would have graduated. Um, and then we kind of looked around at, at some of the leagues that, that were canceling, and we said, look, it, there's a way that we can do this responsibly. And we held our nerve as, as, a, as a league, as an ownership group, and, and our executives, our GMs. You know, we all prepared, 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 and, we, you know, I, and, and it just it, it came together somewhat magically. And, um, 
you know, you create your own luck. And, and it, a lot of hard work went into it from so many people. Um, that one grounded to second base. Vieira will flip to second for the force out. So the Navigators strike for one. They tie the game. John, thank you for coming in the booth once again. John Creedon Jr., the owner of the Nashua Silver Knights, joining us here. Thanks again, John. Thanks so much, Donnie. Great job. Thank you.